whatever I do, that's what I'm looking for. Amen. Yeah. Including this reading of the scripture here. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning. We're going to read this morning from uh, Psalm 85. We, we look enough and we see where said the world is coming to an end. We look at all the <laughs> wickedness, all of the wiseness. I mean, people can use drones to fly a package from your house to another person. <laughs> you never see a soul, but you can receive the wickedness. I was looking at this, this week alone. <clears throat> that was like four teenagers shot and killed in different instances without provocation, but just because of the wickedness in the people's heart. So, but there is a God that has moved upon the scene. If you will accept him, you can see what he is doing. See that he is moving upon us and drawing us together. So we, we desire that each of our hearts be together and united as one. Even this morning, that is God's word come forth that we will see the blessings of God. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful, Lord, and thankful for all that you have done for us, Lord, all that you are doing. Lord, we love you so much and we thank you. We ask you whatever we do, let us be with a yielded heart unto your word. Lord, we ask you to bless us, for there is nothing greater than your word. Lord, from the beginning of Genesis, Lord, through Revelation, Father, let us seek, let us find our place, and let us work together and push strong on God as we invite you with us always. We ask you to be with those in the Sunday school classes, Father. Just touch them in a special way. Open up their hearts, Father, and give them the foundation to grow upon. We ask you to bless Brother Dale and touch him in a special way. God, that we may receive the blessing. God, that we have need of this hour. And we ask you to bless this reading. God, that we are fixing to do. Lord, and just bless it and open it up to our needs and understanding. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Psalm 85. Lord, thou hast been favorable unto the land. Thou hast brought back the captivity of Jacob. Thou hast forgiven the iniquity of thy people. Thou hast discovered all their sins. Thou hast taken away all thy wrath. Thou hast turned thyself from the fierceness of thine anger. Turn us, O God, our salvation, and cause thy anger towards us to cease. Will thou be angry with us forever? Will thou draw out thine anger to all generations? Will thou not receive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee? Show us thy mercy, O Lord, and grant us thy salvation. I will hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace unto his people and to his saints, but let them not turn to what he Surely his salvation is nigh them that fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. Truth shall bring out, truth shall spring out of the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Yea, the Lord shall give that which is good, but our land shall be under increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and shall set us in the way of his steps. Amen. God bless you. you may be seated. I want to see you, amen. I want to see you, to see you, I am lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love, you love him. Shining in the light of your glory, pour out 
to your power and love as we sing. Holy, holy, holy. Amen. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. holy. And I want to see Amen and amen and amen, and I want to see. Amen. Good to see everybody in the house of the Lord. If you'd like to turn in your scriptures, turn where we've been reading in First Peter, and we'll just read back up a little bit and use that in our thought today, of where we've been using First Peter for a long time. But uh, we'll bring, just start with verse 13. And remember now that the Lord willing, after the evening service, we will be having a birthday party for Sister Dale after the evening service. We get through with the communion, foot washing, and thing, and be cake and ice cream so everybody stay and have a good time celebrating her 35th birth birthday. She, she, she's just 35 today. So that's, uh, it'd be hard to figure out how that we've been married 60 years, but that's for you to figure it out, okay? So remember that and just pray that the Lord would bless her. She's having a lot of troubles going through all of these tests and things, but pray that the Lord would bring it all out and make everything work out to his, his good. Remember, Brother Luis and them be traveling back. Uh, they're leaving out sometime, coming coming back home and everything. So pray that the Lord would bless them. Brother Joe and them should be already in where their destination, maybe today or whatever. So pray that the Lord would, would have, give them a good time and all like that. Okay. Uh, First Peter, anything else? I generally miss something. First Peter 1 13. Father, we thank you for your love and your grace, Father. Thank you that you have opened our eyes unto your word. And we ask you to just guide us and let your light shine, Father, into our our pathway that it would lighten up to where we can see how to walk because we must walk in you. Have your way. Forgive our sins. Bless God each one. And Lord, just bless these that are traveling, different things, and just have your way with everybody. And let, Lord, your word come forth to manifest itself in this day because it's a promise and we believe you. Father, we thank you. Forgive our sins and guide us in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm. We'll start with verse 13 through 23. We've been using like 22 and 23. All right. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober and hope to the end, for the grace that is to be brought unto you, when? At the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, that is this day, this time, 45 Christ mystery of God revealed at the revealing of the word. All right. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance, but as he which hath called us, hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. And if ye call on the Father, who without respect of persons, judges according to every man's work, past the time of your sojourning here in the fear, for as much as you know that you have not, you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Jesus Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifested in these last times for you, who by him do believe in God, that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and your hope might be in God. Seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of the, of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. You may be seated. The Lord had his blessing to the reading of the word. Now I want to try to uh, 
background some and all, but uh, you that have got your notes, you notice you got the same notes that you had Sunday, I mean uh, Wednesday, uh, to where that you uh, can just follow along in the reading. But I want to us to think on something that I tried to express there in the message. First off, do we believe the promises of God are yea and amen? amen? That was our thought. All right. See, if God promised something, then it's not up to us to try to make that manifest. Right. It's up to him to make it manifest. We just follow along, go right along with it and all, but it's up to him if he said it. Right. So all we got to do is to find out if God said it, all right, then if he said it, then we believe it. Amen. He promised to do it. It's always been the same down through there. Uh, like the Bible says, when the day of Pentecost was fully come. What? He had promised it. Right. Amen. All right. When it fully come, then the Holy Ghost fell. He promised it. See, then that's, that's what we should be thinking about. All right. Now, to, to, to see that and to find the day and the hour that we're living and the promises for this time to where we're at, to where we can follow in that line. Okay. Now, we covered and have been covering for quite a while about the new birth. And we had some last night on the uh, points of the new birth, the baptism of the Holy Ghost in the uh, Bible study. And I really enjoyed it. If you want to get the tape and they can make you a copy and listen to it. All right. Because we've been talking about for quite a while about the new birth being the birth of the word, how does the revelation of Jesus Christ personally to you, right. all right? Now, it's not as we were covering last night. See, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, even though it fell on 120 in the upper room, it was not collective, right. or ever how you call it, as a group. Right. It was to each individual right. in the upper room, right. Each individual was receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the new birth, Amen. the birth of the word that they had held for the three and a half years or whatever. And each one was receiving it. And it's not in a collective form. God doesn't deal with us that way. Right. He deals with the Jews more into the line of a group of people or a nation or something. But he deals with us Gentiles as individuals. Right. All right. So then that way, it wouldn't matter as I expressed it last night. You had them sitting in the upper room, 120. Uh, you have 80, 70, 80 here today sitting. And the Holy Ghost could fall on each person here today and quicken some part of the word to each individual. Right? Right. right. It's here, sitting here. I mean, he could do that all at one time. It wouldn't be collective. It would still be an individual affair. Amen. All right? Amen. So then when the day of Pentecost was fully come, the Holy Ghost fell. What? Because it was time, but it fell on individuals to bring forth that new birth. All right? Now, then so we, we know that we talked about it. I'm referring back to this past Wednesday that we talked about the the new birth, what is it? It's the baptism of the Holy Ghost. All right. What is the baptism of the Holy Ghost? We say, oh, it's this, it's that, it's that. What is the baptism of the Holy Ghost? It's the revealing of God's word. It is the spirit of God coming to you that have took the word and believed it and making that word alive. So there's your baptism. See, we're looking for something to come out of the sky, something to come out of this or some, somewhere, instead of looking at it as what it is, and then <coughs> realizing that the Holy Ghost, as was saying, was in each individual person in the upper room. All right? But it was the promise of the Holy Spirit being poured out <coughs> upon mankind but it was revealing of God's word. And when the word is made alive, there'll automatically be signs and wonders and, right. and, and manifestations and, and, and uh, uh, you know, feelings and, and all kind of things will go with that 
when it's the word being quickened unto you. But we should look to the word being quickened first, you know, and then we go to the basis of whatever took place. Just like get the baby here, right? How many times? Get the baby here at the birth, all right? Then the baby cries. See, it's, it does its thing. That's the way we should be in Christ is let that word be made alive within us and then there'll be great manifestation of all of All right? And see, I'll say this and then I'll get back to it in the message part. I believe, and I've taught this from the, way back in the beginning, I believe we're in the greatest revival that has ever been to the world. Right now. Right. Right. Well, I just don't see nothing going on. See? You say, I just don't see nothing going on. You're looking for something going on. You're not looking the way I'm looking. I've always looked at the revealing of God's word. What else could it be? Here stands a prophet. Here stands a prophet bringing the word, and he said, I've seen sick healed, dead raised, all kind of signs and wonders, right? Amen. But what did he say about the opening of the word of the seals? He said, this is the greatest realm that I've ever worked in. Right. 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 Well, I just don't. That's the way that that... What was the woman preacher back there said at that time? As some of you have told me she said it, or sister so and so. I won't go into name, but said, "Well, I've you know I I've never seen anything greater than what brother Brown, except in my own ministry, you know, because that's the way everybody thinks. See, they wouldn't look in. There was the prophet bringing the word of God from Almighty God Himself, the voice of God speaking to mankind. But people was thinking that ain't no revival." I went down there and he was dead as a doornail. We go over here where we can shout and glory, have a good time in a revival. Huh? Just remember, you're supposed to have re heard this or believed it all the way down. A revival is not for sinners. A revival, you can't revive a sinner. Revival is for those that are already in Christ. All right. So don't forget the thought now of what I'm trying to bring. Okay. But see, to me, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the new birth, and all is one and the same because it's the word that's made alive. And that's the thing that, that has always held me to the basis of what I believe and where that I believe it. See, I believe the word has to be planted then the Spirit of God comes to make that word alive, and what greater could it be? Then you have your signs and wonders and your manifestations and your things. But get to the word first. See? Get to the word first, because if you get to the word, it'll bring these other things. All right. Now, as we've come up in our time and our thoughts of where we got up to the point that uh, we're trying to deal with these virtues and talk about that a little bit of the stature of a perfect man and, and the growth development and things. All right. And as we've come to that place, we know the prophet said, have faith and be born again. All right. And these things, these virtues are the things that God expects us to bring forth. Or to make manifest. He's the one that's going to bring them forth into to you and I. We can't do it anyway, but you understand what I'm getting at. All right. Well, see, we spoke about the <coughs> virtues are to be added to the new birth. But remember now, faith, I'm backing up over a lot of messages, but trying to put it together and hold it. Faith, the new birth, <coughs> is not an ad. It's a birth. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. It's the birth of the word. Amen. All right. Faith, revelation, is a birth of the word. Amen. All right. 
<clears throat> had this old coffin and it keeps hanging on and I keep giving it to the devil and he gives it back to me and, and we have a fight over it, but that's all right. All right. But now what has been our thought? Got one in my mouth. <laughs> what has been our thoughts now? Have faith, the prophet said. You're supposed to have read the stature of a perfect man. And seen how many times he spoke of faith and what faith was. And faith was the foundation of all Christianity because faith is the revealed word of God. The new birth is faith. All right. Now, then you add virtue to faith. It doesn't say add faith. It says, you know, in other words, putting a prophet there, have faith and be born again, and then add. Because you can't add something that there's not something there for it to be added to. So the birth is the birth of the word. All right. Now, see, then you're standing there looking at it as the born again experience of the same born again experience that everybody has had. Everybody has the same new birth. I mean, these things, when I start talking, people just look at me. Well, everybody's had the same new birth. What would be the problem with that? No, they shouted and we cried. They, see, you're, you're still on your manifestations. You're still on your doing. And then when I say baptism of the Holy Spirit, you're looking for something from up in heaven to come down. Some kind of a manifestation. Remember, that's after the birth. If we get that settled, then we can go on through the message and talk about these virtues and things. All right. Now, we come, as I said, to the point that we're talking about. We must have these virtues. We'll get to it at the end of the message, the Lord will it. That Brother Branham covers it, that there'll be no rapture without these virtues. You say, well, why is the rapture so been not, you know, come or whatever? We thought it'd be a long time ago. It's our problem. He says these, the person with these virtues is the one that's going into rapture. Well, I see then I'm serious in the point that I've always been serious that looking at those things and studying the word from 50 years ago, coming and still thinking the same today. How do we get those virtues? If we must have them. And to the people that are going to be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye, that group of people is going to be those standing there with the virtues. Now they may go by the grave for other things and all, but I'm talking about the change when I talk about rapture. All right? See, now what's the point of the rapture, the virtues, the thing, all of it tied together in the simple thoughts of a prophet bringing about the new birth. Come on, that's, that's the point you ought to think on. He made it simple. We get the new birth. Then we get a growth development in the word to the position to where that we can be qualified for a change of these bodies. You say, well, why, why? See, that's the point. Why has it been so long? Because of the bride. Now, what did we talk about the bride? What did we talk about her this past Wednesday? We went into scriptures there in, in Ephesians. I believe it was. What? Awake thou that sleepeth. And we talked about where the prophet said that it was the bride asleep in them denominations. Now, what about it? The bride being asleep. Well, I'm not asleep. I, I, I'm wide awake. I'm in this message. Well, that was back yonder now when we was in them denominations 
and then we come out of them denominations and now we're in the bride age. You're only in the bride age if you're birthed into it. You're going to get down to that one one of these days. The prophet says you're birthed into this, you're birthed into this, you're birthed into this. There's a bride age. You got to be birthed into it. The bride's not in Lady Osea. No, the bride's not. She's birthed into the age of the opening of the word. That's where the trouble has been. If people are not believing what the word has said and watching it for the hour and time that we're living. You're trying to figure it out with something to put there to make it work and it won't work. It has to be God revealing it and making it manifest. All right. So then what do we talk about? Watch that in a minute when we get back to it. An awakening of the bride. The Bible says, Revelation 18, 4, come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her plagues and things. But yet we're just sleeping alone. Uh-huh. See, it's just getting worse and worse. People are just falling away. It's just falling back and just getting less concerned. You say, well, don't pick on me. Well, I ain't picking on you. If there's anything, the word is doing the picking. I don't have anything to do with that. But now listen. We must have these virtues, I said, to bring us to a place of rapture and faith. All right. Now, and to have these virtues, there must be a way that we can receive them. So that's what we covered Wednesday night. We've covered it over and over. I've preached this for 40-something years. What? How that we get these virtues is what? If these virtues were in the early church, and the prophet said they were, they had it in the least little nod. All right. But down through the dark ages and things, the channel and ways of these things has went away until you got to have the returning of the faith of the fathers. And what is the returning of the faith or revelation of the fathers? To bring these virtues back into the church. Right? That's the simple thing to me that, that I've always looked at. It's the faith of the fathers. It's to see to come back to where they were. And that's why I've always tried to get you to see it. See, Peter standing there saying, I'm speaking to born again believers today, he said. And said, now we've got to grow into these things. And said, to do that, we've got to have these virtues and things. All right? And as he does, he's trying to teach us how to get to where he was. Uh But that was lost through the dark ages and things. Until you barely come out of it with a new birth. Right? But then promised that it would be restored. Is Malachi 4 a promise? Behold, I send you Elijah the prophet and he'll do. It's a promise. Amen. Well, just because it would be brought forth in Brother Branham, that doesn't mean that it's made manifest by you and me. Right. No. Right. There's a lot of difference in that. Right. A lot of difference in what he made manifest and what me and you running around with. Exactly. All right. But you see... Then 327 church age book, this messenger of Malachi 4, Luke 17, 30, Revelation 10, 7, in other words, all of, is going to do two things. What? One, turn the hearts of the children back to the face of the Father. Amen. That's what he come for. Amen. All right? But he didn't finish that. No. Now he tells us how that is to be done because, and two, to reveal the seven thunders, which is a revelation contained in the seven seals, and it'll be these divinely revealed mystery truths that literally turn us back. Amen. All right, now he's turning us, telling us how that it can happen Amen. by those seven thunders. Yes. Yes. Well, nobody don't know what those thunders are 
Your prophet said it was the voice of God, so I'm solved with that. You can argue all you want to, and it's got to be this, and it's got to be that. Anything you tell me that it's got to be, it's going to come back to the revealing of the word. Amen. Come on, I done been around too long, so don't think that I'm not serious about doing it. I've already been through all of it. You say, oh, them 700, that's the third pull. But Aaron said the third pull is the opening of the word. Yeah, but there's this, that, and that's up between you and God and what he wants to do about it. I'm just answering the question. The third pull is the opening of the word. That's what your prophet said. But do we believe that? Oh, we believe that, but we want this, all this other stuff to put something to where we, we don't believe and stand on the word. All right, let's believe one thing. Let's take what we can prove to be true and stand on it and believe it. Right? Okay. See, then my contention has been all along, the new birth is a revealing of God's word. Amen. Well, see, that's, that settles that. That's, right. that's what we're talking about at last night. You know, and you think about it. Brother Branham, when he would say something, he's telling you what the word of God says. Right? That's right. right? That's right. I thought that's what we believe the prophet was supposed to come and do. Right was to tell us what the Word says. Amen. And the Word is God. Amen. All right? Amen. As we were talking about Wednesday night then. Mm -hmm. See where the prophet said, the thunder is the voice of God when the seal breaks. Right. Amen. He's, one time as I gave it to you Wednesday, he said it thundered from inside the throne. He said, now here stood the Lamb. Right. All right, what's he doing? A channel for things to come forth. The voice of God speaking from eternity to tell the lamb what to bring forth and what to... All right, all right then what's to go next? The thunder's the voice of God. Amen. All right? The voice of God then would transfer from the lamb who would take the book and open the seals. It would transfer from the lamb to the end time prophet. Right? You still got the voice of God. Amen. Right? Amen. You still got the voice of God. You got it coming down to understanding. Right. Amen. All right. Now when it comes to the prophet, then where does it go from there? Amen. It goes to the fivefold ministry. Amen. Now that's what your Bible says. Amen. And that's what your prophet said. But you get to there and you back up. See, you follow me. Okay, God is a voice and he's thundering. And then the prophet, the lamb, the blast forth and all. And then the prophet gets it. And you're doing good there. You're riding along. That's real good. But then you say, now it's the fivefold ministry. It's the voice of God. Amen. Now listen, folks, I don't mind being straight and plain. Always been we. You never tried to hide nothing. Thank you. Always just been straight. Thank you. I don't argue with anybody about a lot of this called fivefold ministry people of this message. I don't blame you for not wanting to hear them. Right. But you know what? If there's a fault, there is a true somewhere. Amen. Right? If there's a fault, there's a truth somewhere. Okay. So the voice of God is still sounding. Now listen, we didn't end that. See, that's where people take it with me and they'll stop on that line and they'll say, well, I don't see about the five, four minutes. They don't, they don't go on with it to the basis of seeing that the life stage of that voice of God, the thunder, is in the bride of Jesus Christ. It comes to you and it's speaking to you personally to you and you're sounding that voice. I thought the prophet said the bride would be the final voice. Am I quoting him? To the final age. See, that's where people say, oh, y'all are just one that says that and the other. You ain't never talked to a oneness and, and got it right. A oneness would just hold it to one manifestation of God. Our Jesus was the last one. I differ with that totally. 
Brother Branham wasn't the life's manifestation of God either. The bride of Jesus Christ is the life's manifestation. That's what your prophet said. But do we believe it? See, I'm trying to put it down to where you're at. Getting you to see who you are and what's going on. You realize because God spoke to the prophet doesn't mean that he spoke to me and you. He does that by way of the prophet to speak. But that's the voice of God. If the thunder is the voice of God, and we read it over and over Wednesday night to you, where the prophet was giving it, that, that it's the voice of God when the, when the seal breaks and all of the things, these seven thunders. We say, well, but we don't need this. We don't need, why don't we need it? We need something. Right, right. You're going to have to admit one thing. We've been around here a long time. I think it's time to wake up and quit playing around with your sugar tits. We've been around here a long time. How much longer do you think we got? But that's one thing that I've always said, and you watch it in what I'm talking about, because I've always believed in a revival of the opening of the word. And see, then this message has never died in me. From the day that I started in this message, it's been opening and it's still opening. Wade the other day was here preaching like everything, and I preached the seals three times, I know. And all at once, I saw the second seal open. It's like that. Well, come to a proper opinion. You know, I don't know everything. Huh? But I know a God that knows everything. I'm still learning. I'm still gaining ground. If you ever get to the point that you think that you're not gaining ground, you're in bad shape. The word of God is still unfolding itself. And even after we leave this world and go into the eternities, the prophet said there'll be a message of cheer down through the endless ages. It'll still be an unfolding of God or revealing of God even after we leave this world. I've always said it this way. We're just getting enough here to be able to understand that. That's the best way I can say it. All right, but do you see what I'm talking about? How do we get those virtues? It's got to be by the seven thunders. All right, if the thunders is not sounding, we can't get it. That's plain. Okay, is that straight enough with you? If the thunders ain't sounding, you can't get it. Because we're going to read where the prophet said it's the person with these virtues that's going to go into rapture. And we can't have the virtues without having the thunders. So we're going to all die and go by the grave. And this whole thing is going to be a flop. No. Somebody is going to believe it and stand up for it. Well, why not let it be you and me? We fought over all of these doctrines and ideas and opinions of people of the message. When those demons come in and try to take away and pull this and pull that, and we fought it out. Why can't we rejoice about what we see? Well, I just don't say nothing. But I said, you're saying the word's not opening. You know whose fault it is? Yours. It's your fault because you're not accepting what God has sent it. Huh? I don't make nothing out of me or any other fivefold ministry or whatever, but it does make one thing for sure. Your prophets when it said it, and your Bibles when it said it, that the fivefold ministry was for the perfecting of the saints. Now, do you believe that? He said, fill me up with these virtues that I may teach others to bring these things to pass. That's in the statue of perfect man. You're supposed to have read and listened to. All right, but listen now. See, then by Malachi 4, the message, <coughs> according to the prophet, then the thunders would sound to the prophet. He sounds it out to you and I. 
And God makes it manifest as the revealed word. Okay. All right? The opening of the word is the revealing of Jesus Christ to you and I. Amen. All right? Because that way then you can hold to it that that voice that you hear You know, what, uh, let me ask you a simple question or a thought. Why is it that you don't go after all these doctrines and ideas that went forth in the message? When the people of the messages went after it, why didn't you go after it? And some of you did and flittered around and flattered around a little bit and played with it some, but you've come back enough to understand that those things weren't right. Well, that's what I got against you, Brother Dale, because you just, you just make it too plain. You, you, you expose me. One day, when we're standing at the bar of judgment, I want to ask you a question. Did you want to be exposed there or be exposed here? I want to get mine right here. I don't care what it takes. I don't care what it takes, how much repentance it takes, how much what I'm doing it takes. I want it right here. I don't want no trouble at the river, right? Come on then. What are we thinking about? Okay. Now watch what I'm getting at. Watch the point that I'm getting at. The whole thing was the point of it Wednesday night. The prophet tells us the thunders, the only way to get the virtues is for the thunders to sound forth. This messenger of Malachi 4, Luke 17, 30, Revelation 10, 7, going to do two things. One, turn the hearts of the children back to the faith of Father. Two, reveal the thunders, which is revelation contained in the seven seals. It'll be these divinely revealed mystery truths that literally turn their hearts back. Okay, you can't argue with that. Ask your prophet a question and let him answer it. Okay. Brother Branham, what is the new birth? Okay. There's been so much confusion about the new birth. What is the new birth? Christ the mystery of God revealed. He said the new birth is a revelation of Jesus Christ personally to you. Right. Brother Branham, what is the thunders? He says it's the voice of God when the seal breaks. Right. Uh -huh. Brother Branham, what's going to bring rapture and faith? You see, that's where I'm putting it all together and been doing it for quite a while. Have you been watching it? Yes. See, then if we don't want to know how to get these virtues, it's got to be by the opening of the word Amen. of those seven thunders. Amen. That's what your prophet said. All right. Now go to step two. Look what he says. We read this Wednesday. They can pull it up. They want to. Number eight. But that's all right. Which is 356, Lady of Sea and Church Age. And let me say this here. I don't believe that God is calling only to the false vine to repent. In this verse, he is talking to the elect. You've got to start read it. They have something to, some, they have some repenting to do too. Many of his children are still in those false churches. Now, he didn't name Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian. You know, you could put Branhamites in there, you know, or Lulaites. All right. They're of those of whom it speaks in Ephesians 5 and 14. Awake thou that sleepest and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. To be asleep is not to be dead. These are the sleeping amongst the dead. You know, Paul, you remember what he said over there, that he wanted an out resurrection? You know what Paul wanted an out resurrection? Come on, that's scripture. He said they'd be an out, he wanted an out resurrection. Out from among the dead. An out resurrection from among the dead. 
Look, to be asleep is not to be dead. These are sleeping amongst the dead. They're out there in the dead denominations. They're floating along with their, they are floating along with them. God cries out, wake up. Repent of your folly. Here they're lending their influence, even giving their time and their money. Actually, their very lives to these antichrist organizations and all the while thinking it's all right. They need to repent. They must repent. They need to have a change of mind and turn toward the truth. What about it? What's going to wake us up, folks? Okay. Go to number seven while you're on there. And we'll see. Paragraph 182 of the third seal. Now that's what the reason, what's the reason today that the revivals that we're supposed to have. Now listen. Oh, there ain't no more revivals. There ain't no more worldwide sweeping revivals. But the bride, now listen to what he says here and, and read it and listen. We have denominational revivals. We haven't had a real stirring. No, 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 sir. Don't think we got revivals. We haven't. Well, they got millions and millions of church members, but not a revival nowhere. No, no. The bride hasn't had a revival yet. There's been no revival, no manifestation of God to stir the bride yet. This is right in the middle of the seals. Come on. There's been no revival, no manifestation of God to stir the bride. See, we're looking for it. It will take those seven unknown thunders back there to wake her up Amen. again. He will send it. He promised it now. But he said she's dead. Right. Now what about it? But then, I mean, you mentioned this and that's what I say on the internet. I heard this laughing like everything. There ain't going to be no more revivals. Brother Dale don't understand. There ain't no more revival. I've understood this 40 years ago. I've never looked for a worldwide sweeping revival because your prophet said, no, those are over. Yeah. Now, listen. He said the last world sweeping revival was Azusa Street. Come on. He said the last world sweeping revival was Azusa Street. Right in the middle of the seals, the greatest revival that has ever been is transpiring. Right? It's not a worldwide sweeping revival. It's a worldwide sweeping revi revival of the opening of God's word. Yes, right. Amen. 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 It's spread all over the whole world yes, right. from that one little man. Yes, right. Calling Azusa Street the last worldwide sweeping revival. He said there ain't going to be no more. He said the next one is the two witnesses to Israel right. of that form. Right in the midst, as I said a while ago, right in the midst of him saying, this is operating in the greatest realm that I've ever operated in. Amen. You think he wouldn't have in a revival? Yes. Come on, Amen. You think it wasn't something to him for those seals to break? that brought to him the revelation of Jesus Christ and showed him all about the Antichrist and all of the things? A worldwide sweeping revival of the opening of God's Word. Not a worldwide sweeping revival of signs and wonders and different things. <coughs> As I said to you Wednesday night, what? 
Don't you count the day of, of the Holy Ghost falling on there in the Bible in the upper room? Wouldn't you call that a worldwide sweeping revival? Didn't it produce a worldwide sweeping revival from that? Right. From the book of Acts? But yet there was not one sign or wonder in the upper room. Come on. They wouldn't signs and wonders outside to get the people's attention. Those come on gradually. You even go over to, to uh, <coughs> the Gentiles and the door being opened. And when you do, you don't seek manifestation. Why have we got so much on the manifestation as to something to show a revival? When your prophet would tell you that he was operating in the greatest realm that had ever been. And he said it'll take those seven unknown thunders to wake her up. It's all right. No wonder where people are not in a revival. They don't know what a revival is. See, we Baptists knew, you, you'll quote it with us, right? That reviving is not to revive a sinner. It's a Christian supposed to get revived because you can't revive a sinner. It's supposed to be a Christian. It was Christians straightening up and getting their lives right and God coming forth and doing as it did. Then the people around there begin to see that happening and then they come to the altar to accept Jesus Christ as their Savior. Come on, church. Why can't we read the prophet and listen? Sitting there this morning looking where there was revival in every church age. Where there's been revival after revival after revival all the way down through there. But there was only certain revivals that was worldwide sweeping. And this revival that I'm talking about is only for the elect. Those seven unknown thunders is only for the elect. It is not for the world. Huh? Sure, they can get the effects of it and everything, but it's not for them. All right, then the thunders being what will bring us back with the, f the f virtues, right? Right. right? Now we see, and I hope you were following that Wednesday, now we see for surety that the, those seven unknown thunders is what wakes her up. But have you been woke up by the word that's been revealed to you? Amen. Go into, uh, is it the sign of the end time, sir? I believe it's the one. Go in there and get that list of the thing that Brother Branham was saying about that has been made known in this last day. You remember what he was saying? Predestination straightened out. One God, no eternal hell, all these things like that. He lets about, and he, he comes down and he leaves out number eight from Schofield. Right. Yep. And that is the bride becoming one with the word. Amen. Why he left that out, I don't know. I, nothing to me, I don't care. I just appointed work. It did. He left out number eight is coming down. Right. Mm -hmm. But all of the things, look what God has done for you and I. Yes. Look where he has brought us from yes. by the opening of the word. I mean, are, are you afraid that if Brother Dale said, I, I'm going to have a Baptist preacher come Sunday and straighten us out. I'm going to have him come in and straighten us out on the Godhead. How many of you would be afraid to come? You'd be afraid to come, then you'd know for sure you don't understand the truth. I don't, I don't want to do this. I might get deceived. Honey, don't worry about it. When you got that thought, you already deceived. You just ain't man enough or woman enough to admit it. Uh -huh. But you see what it's doing? 
God has promised us. Look at the, at the point of what I'm talking about. The Bible promised Amen. Malachi 4 that God would send a prophet Amen. and told us what he would do, turn the hearts of the children and turn the children's fathers. He would turn the both ways because it would be dealing with the spirit and power of Elijah. But the last days would come down to a Gentile prophet to bring the word to return us back to the faith of the fathers. What is the faith of the father? The revelation of the fathers. How many gods did the, did the apostles have? Did they preach anything about eternal hell? Did they preach anything about all of these messed up doctrines? It wasn't from the apostles. They were the ones that straightened all of that out and laid it in order. I'm just trying to get you to think. If God promised something, why can't we say, God, bring it to pass? Are you afraid of the word? Are you afraid to put God to the point of asking him? The Lord, bring the truth to us if it kills every one of us. Right? But are you listening to what I'm saying? Here's a prophet telling you about worldwide sweeping revival. Yes, there ain't going to be no more worldwide sweeping revival. Azusa Street was the last one of those. But then he talks about, listen, how many of these do you need? That in the 50s and on up, the promise of God to bring a revival. And what about when he gets into the opening of the seals and the thing? The greatest revival the world has ever seen was through the opening of those seven seals. But I don't see no revival. I don't see nothing going on. And I've even had it thrown in my face like this. If we're where we think we are, Oh, if we're where we think we are, why ain't there more signs and wonders? That's exactly right there. That's the unbelief. That's the thing that's keeping it from happening. It's the fact that we're not believing it to say this is it. I've had people to throw it in my face. Uh, well, well, that brother so-and-so. He, he brought that two lords or two souls. But that's his way. Now, he's got a right to believe what he wants to. Not according to my Bible, he doesn't. Well, that's his business. That's right. But it's my business to tell you, according to my Bible, we ain't none of us got no rights. We forfeited all those rights to accept Jesus Christ. Yes, but Brother Dale, you shouldn't be so hard. Think. You don't listen to Brother Branham raking the coals over. Sitting among the Pentecostal people in the 50s and things and teaching adoption and said, that's where you messed up at. On the seal book, he said they cabbage down on it. He said, you messed up on the basis you're not believing God's word. You think he wasn't hard and strong? Oh, no, he was sweet. He, he, yeah, he was sweet, all right. But are you listening? What revival, Brother Dale, are you talking about? An opening of God's word. That each day as I read God's word and and then when he unfolds it to me, that brings into me the greatest thing that could ever happen in the world is to God to reveal to a human being his word. You're not happy about that? You're not happy about what you see? Oh, you're just exalted over what you see. That, that's the way it is, Brother Dale. You're just exalted. Well, there's one thing about it. I spent my life to learn what this prophet said. You stared yours in the Walmarts and the hangouts and everything else. 
instead of studying the Word of God. But I don't want to be an intellect. No, don't worry about it. Intellect ain't going to do none of us no good. But stupidity ain't either. Right? Oh, I just want to be humble. Brother Dale, you don't want to be humble. You need to be humble. I try. But that's my problem. And what's yours? All right, but are you listening? Yes. It's going to take the seven unknown thunders to wake the bride up. It's going to take those seven unknown thunders to bring the virtues. All right. It's going to take those seven unknown thunders to bring us to rapture and faith. Come on. What about it? Rapture and faith. Let's see if I can get this one. All right, we just covered it. From the lady you see in church age where he said something must wake up the bride. That's asleep. Amen. Something must wake her up and it must bring us to a, rev a revival. Amen. Listen to your prophet 1962 letting off the pressure. Now some of these they don't have. Some of them they do. I have kind of listened. It's 1962. Now listen. I've kind of listened and watch my Pentecostal brethren as they have predicted a sweeping revival coming. And we all know that the revival that we've just went through has ceased. Are you reading it? Come on now. But there must be, now remember 62, this is not the seals. He said it ceased. But there must be coming something else that's glorious and great. And so I've been studying hard to find these places in the scripture. I think that if our revelation must be scriptural. Amen. Then we know it's right. Amen. If it's a scripture. Right. It's from the Lord. Amen. And I'm beginning to believe that that's right. And there's coming a ripening time for the evening fruits. Amen. Sound like he was looking for something. Amen. Sound like all the way through there. That's what I'm just telling you. Listen to the message. And see how that your prophet is always looking for something to take place. And even after the opening of the seals, he was looking for something to take place. He said, there'll come such a baptism of the Holy Ghost that it'll fill every fiber of our being and take us into rapture. Was the prophet looking forward to something or was he looking at it? Yeah. Okay, here's one. This is three kind of believers, 1963, 11, 24, and paragraph 97. That's the reason I do believe that when the bride is called out and elected and set in the book of life, there will come a sound from heaven that'll take such a baptism of the Holy Spirit into that bride that'll take her from the earth in a rapturing grace. God promised it. Church, what's going to change you and I? What's going to put us into the place of rapture and faith? Everything is linked upon the basis of whether or not those seven thunders have sounded. I can show you in the seal book things that looks like that the prophet even questioned. But when he finished the week, 
He said, that's what it's been. He said, it's been the angels of the Lord bringing me back here for this message, he said, tonight. The promises of God are yea and amen. amen. But to think about it, wake her up. Restore to her the faith of the fathers. Let's see if I can get that one's number. I think we just read it. Number seven. Yeah. All right. Here's one I want to get to that no, they don't have. We'll get to this and we'll quit. What about a prophet crying out for the awakening in our soul? Is there not something burdening you and troubling you as to the day and the hour that we're living and why things are running like they are? You're not troubled and burdened about that? You're not concerned about the age and the time and the hour that we're living? Well, let's finish it with this. I don't have this one, but I got it. Statue of Perfect Man. Paragraph 352 through 57, 58. Then God representing his church as a bride, a woman. God represents his church as a bride. And the way he brings each individual to being his son to go in that bride, he also brought the bride through those ages. All right? Till he brings this one complete church. He's talking about his feet moving and all, and Luther can do all that. But each age, God has promised these things into his church and patterned it by showing that each individual has these possesses these qualities. And this being when it's completed, now listen, is the church of God, now you're talking about the church, right? And then your church individual, listen to it. And this being when it's completed is the church of God going into rapture. And this being, now that's the church, right? Now listen to it. And this being and completed is a servant of God in the church of God that's going into rapture. Right. Hmm. Then the whole stature of your being is governed and controlled by these things, but it cannot be completely controlled until it completely possesses these virtues. What about it? What do we think we've got? Another 40 years, 50 years? Right? And I'm the guy that has stood here in 1974 and proved to you by Brother Branham and the quotes that we could pass the year 2026. I said that in 74 and I'm still today. You're welcome to the tapes to listen to it. But I did not want it to go this far, and I have not wanted it to go this far. And I'm not gloating in the fact that I knew that it would. <coughs> I know there's one thing for certain. It is not time and ways and elements. He said, I'm scared of your experiences. It's a revelation from God. Brother Branham says, rapture message, the bride would be waiting for the revelation of the rapture. Amen. Now, the bride would be waiting for the revelation. It's going to take these divinely revealed truths of the thunders to turn our hearts back. It's going to take that to bring us to a rapturing condition. Why are the people scared of it then? Why are the people scared of the seals when they're afraid they can't talk on it right? 
Why are they afraid of Daniel 70 weeks? Why? When your prophet said in the Daniel 70 weeks book, just open the front page and read. If you got the book, open it and read it. He says, you can't understand the seals and the thing if you don't understand Daniel 70 weeks. But why are people so scared of those things? Why not just try to bring what you can bring and bring it to a place that you can see it? Brother Dale, what are you talking about? I'm talking about that like I've told you over and over and over. When I started reading this message, I saw God speaking to mankind. Not God as Brother Branham. Not those type of things. I saw God using a man to bring his word. That questions that we had, little things that were so hindrance unto each one of us that he in his simplicity could explain the Godhead. As you're a human being, you're this, you're that. But there ain't three of you. Just making it so simple that we could read it and understand it. And for 50 years, still gaining ground, reading this message. It's a wonderful message to me. It has the answer to every question that you have. Right? Right? is in this message. Amen. Huh? But are we willing to put it all on to that? Why do we want to hold just a little bit just in case? Why not just say this is it and let's go. Come on, musicians. What are you looking for, Brother Dale? Not looking for, I'm looking at. I'm looking at the greatest revival. I'll repeat it again while they're coming. The greatest revival this world has ever had. Now listen. Greater than when Jesus walked here. Because when Jesus walked here, there was no possibility of that being revealed. Because it was within him. Right? Right? And even the Holy Ghost coming on the day of Pentecost could not reveal the entire word of God. It would take God to send a prophet for our day. And reading that and understanding those things and seeing that it's the greatest revival that has ever been. But Brother Branham, you don't listen to something like that? Where he said, I've seen the dead raised, I've seen sick healed. He said, I've seen all kind of miracles. But this is, he said, I've never worked in this realm. What was it? He said, this is the opening of the word by the same spirit. <coughs> Why can't you be happy for what you've seen, and what you believe? Why can't you rejoice about where you believe that God has brought you from? Because look where we would be. Right. If he hadn't woke us up, we'd still be out there asleep. Or are, we, or are we still asleep tonight or today? See, the word is true. Amen. The greatest thing that has ever happened is right now happening. But are you following it? Are you saying this is it? Well, I'm, let, let me be like they said. If this ain't it, Brother Brown, what did he say? He said, let me keep this till that gets here. Right? right? right. That's right. Well, see, this is the opening of the word. The most rejoicing revival that the people has ever had. Right. But yet nobody don't see the revival. Could it be that you spend your time reading other things? I was looking at one just now and before it came out 
where Brother Renham says, talking about doing, he said, are these old magazines and things that you're reading and studying? No more about everything else instead of the Word of God. We could at least have by now have a, a foundation that we should not be worried about whether it'll stand. It has stood the test so far down through the 70s, the 80s, the things, and stood there. Huh? When I asked a person one time, I said, what if the rapture don't come by 77? They said, well, I'll get out of the message. Then they said, I'd say we misunderstood Because it was a date or a time. Let's stand. What we got, brother? Let's try 201. And Instead of the revealed word, it was an idea or a concept. We might have to change keys, but that's okay. Anybody have a need? He the got the open. whole world in his hand. He got the whole wide world in his hand. He got the whole world. You have a need? The altar's open. In his hand. He got Come and let's see. Let's hand. see if God lives. Got the wind and you see, the I'm breeze. having a revival. In his hand, he yeah, but you don't act like it. Well, I act the in same hand, I did 40 years ago. I'm acting the way I did 40 years ago. I ain't died. I'm still looking at the opening of the Word and still enjoy reading or hearing it. In his hand, he got the whole I love to go back in the 50s and hear a message. I like to go up to 65 and hear a message. What about it? Everybody in his hands, he got everybody. Anybody have a name? A worldwide sweeping revival of the opening of God's Word. Because that's what I've always believed. If God is revealing something in Lula, Georgia, then he's revealing it in Africa. He's revealing it in China. He's revealing it in India. He's revealing his word. Because the bride is feasting upon that word. She's putting on the garments. She's being dressed by the word of God. What about it? Oh. And he's got to. You love him? You love him for what he's done for you? How he's revealed himself? You and me, brother. You're dismissed. Remember the service this afternoon. Remember waiting in, in the evening service. Body. Father, just be with each one. Lord, we love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name. Body. You got the whole world.